Imagine I told you that there's a city. A city on the second largest country on Earth. A city home to 25% of that country's population. You would probably not believe me. Then imagine I said that despite the fact that a quarter of the country's population lives there, the city is only home to 1,258. Okay, I lied a little. It's not really allowed to be a country. Only 11 people were ever born there. And the city I was talking about, it's not really allowed to be a city either. It sits on the edge of our maps, forgotten, overlooked, sparsely populated, but massive. Welcome to That Is Interesting. I'm your host, Carter. With me, I have my special guest, Oliver. Today, the strange world of Antarctica. Humans have always believed that with so much land in the northern hemisphere, there must be a great southern continent to balance it out. They called this mysterious land Terra, Australis, and the Dutch thought they must have found it in 1606, when they came upon Australia in 1820. However, a Russian expedition to the South Pole slighted a massive icy mountainous land, Antarctica, it became the last place to ever be discovered on Earth, but it was found to be completely uninhabitable. So much, in fact, that not a single human was being was found on the continent when it was discovered. Not even mosquitoes were able to populate the ice-covered land. Because the continent lacked any native population to preside over its government affairs, in 1961, 12 nations signed the Antarctic Treaty. Since then, 41 more have signed on. This agreement states that the treaty does not recognize, dispute, nor establish the territorial sovereignty claims. No new claims shall be asserted while the treaty is in force. Simply put, no one can own Antarctica. However, prior to the signing of the treaty, Argentina, Australia, Chile, France, Germany, New Zealand, Norway, and the United Kingdom all claim certain pizza-shaped slivers of land each meeting at the South Pole. The treaty says that all these claims are illegal, but the countries still say they get to have them. And then there's Russia and the United States, who each say that they are allowed to have slices of Antarctica if they want to, even though the treaty doesn't allow that either. Other than the territorial claims, some of which overlap causing further disputes, the treaty has done pretty well. It says that no countries can test weapons there, and it allows research bases to be built, some of which have turned into little towns, including McMurdo Station, Antarctica's largest city. Because of its non-country status, people are not really allowed to be born there. But then, this happened. Argentina is one of the closest nations to Antarctica because of this thing called the Antarctic Peninsula, which juts out of the continent and comes within 560 miles of South America. I mean, penguins can actually be found in Argentina because of its proximity to Antarctica. Meanwhile, Argentina claims this sliver of Antarctica even though the treaty doesn't allow it. Argentina really thinks they should own the sliver. I mean, it's part of an official province and everything. Antarctica also has more Argentinians there than people of any other country combined. So yeah, they've really tried to settle it. In 1973, a military dictatorship ruled Argentina. One way they tried to legitimize their claims to the land was by actually going through the trouble to fly a pregnant woman to Antarctica just to have a baby there. The baby was born and his name is Emilio Marcos Palma and although Antarctic citizenship isn't a thing, he's become a sort of minor celebrity because of his birthplace. Oh yeah, and the dictator that sent his mother there to give birth to him was kicked out of office just four months later. So, yeah. Now let's talk about the only place Antarctica can even really call a town, McMurdo Station. That's right. Since it's not a country, it's called a station, not a town south of New Zealand, on the coast of the Ross Sea. It's not actually on mainland Antarctica either. 
It sits on Ross Island, a large volcanic island just off the mainland coast, which holds Mount Erubus, the second tallest mountain on the continent, and the farthest south active volcano in the world. It is an American research base that has developed into a town of about 1,000. Now, one of the most unusual things about Antarctica is the fluctuation of its population. During the summer, there are around 5,000 people living in various research bases around the continent. About 25% of those 5,000 call McMurdo Station their home, as it is the most developed base for living on, with three airports, a heliport, ATMs, many buildings, and a port which ships cargo in to be transported to the Amundsen Scott base at the South Pole. In the winter, however, it is a very different story. The entire continent's population drops from 5,000 to a mere 1,000, and McMurdo Station goes down to just 250 residents. This population drop every winter is due not just to freezing temperatures, but heavy snowfall, which makes it impossible for any supplies to be shipped in or people to be flown out. Once winter strikes, you're stuck on Antarctica until summer. That is Antarctica, a strange freezing continent on the bottom of the earth, where one tiny town holds a quarter of the population. A population that reduces fivefold when winter arrives. There's a flag, but isn't a country. Where people live, but no one owns. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you learned something new. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover the countries, cities, people, and places of the world and beyond. These videos will leave you saying, That, that is interesting. interesting.